Hello, welcome to the Building Blocks of Bass. My name is Bob Debu. here eating Skittles. Happy Halloween. Um, I will be eating candy throughout today's guided practice session. Just a heads up to anybody that uh, has strong feelings about candy. Um, I will be eating candy during this <laughs> today's lesson or guided practice session. So today, I want to talk about something very essential to a bass player's uh, to have in a bass player's bag of tricks. It's not even a bag of tricks. This is like you have to have this. This is like bass player wearing pants. It has to happen. You have to be able to do this. You have to be able to play in a two feel. And so today we're going to talk about half notes and a two feel and how to make that work and how to make it feel good. Okay? Because you know, by definition, uh, a half note is not a lot of it's not a lot of information, especially at a slower tempo. You know, when you start creeping up there, it gets a little faster, of course. But um, really locking in on half notes, especially with like a drummer, um, is a trick, you know. And uh, making that feel good and staying focused while you're playing something that's a little less um, active, you know. So it's really, it, it can really be a trick. So we're going to talk about half notes, and we're going to talk about the two feel, and we're going to have a good time. We're going to play it over... Um, you know, a couple weeks ago we focused on all of me as far as learning the melody and learning to play like a solo over it. And today we're going to use that as our vehicle, our uh, chord changes vehicle today as well. So if you're just joining us, click the link down below. You can get a PDF of uh, the worksheets that I'm using to, in today's uh, guided practice session. Uh, also, I'm super excited. I get to finally announce it. The Building Blocks of Bass course is live on OpenStudioJazz.com. Click the link down below. Uh, until midnight tonight, and I was talking with uh, my friend uh, Andrew earlier. We don't know if it's Eastern, Central, you know, whatever, like what time zone we're talking about, but the, the $30 off deal ends tonight at midnight. So wherever it's midnight at your place, make sure you click that down. <laughs> you, you can buy the course before then, okay? Um, also, if you're just joining me, I will be eating candy throughout today. Happy Halloween. Happy uh, practicing, but happy, can happy candy. So I'm eating Skittles. That's what I'm going to partake in during our guided practice session. But I've got some other various things here. Shout out your candy, whatever you're eating. Um, and um, so I won't get too distracted by that, but it's going to help me for sure. You want me eat, eating candy today. So for our half notes, and please, yeah, leave some comments. I see somebody's already commented. Maybe that was Andrew. Um, but please leave comments. I always go back and check them. I'm probably going to check them maybe halfway through today, kind of have a little bit more interaction like before we get to the very end. But please leave comments, um, just nice ones. Just kidding. Anyways, so to talk about a two feel, what does that mean? So I've got some really good examples for y'all to listen to. I put together a really quick little Spotify playlist um, of some great examples of a two feel that really is swinging. And the go-to guys, uh, Israel Crosby. Paul Chambers, uh, Ray Brown, of course, everybody with all that clarity. There's so many people that can really dance super well in a two feel. But I remember, I forget exactly where I heard the story from, but somebody saying that Ray Brown called Paul Chambers the master of the two feel. And there's a great track, if you don't know it already, uh, on Miles Davis's Relaxin', uh, It Could Happen to You, where Paul plays in a two feel the entire time. And it just feels so good. It feels so swinging, and you keep it, the, the track keeps playing, and it goes on for a while. You know, everybody's taking solos. It's a typical track, you know, like those prestige sessions. It's going on. It's not like a two-minute type of job. But Paul's staying in two the whole time, and you keep waiting for him to, or I keep waiting for him to to jump into four, and it kind of like uh, low key just like builds this excitement by him staying in two. And another concept too is like. You hear this from Christian McBride in his Your Sound is Your Signature course about staying in a two feel just a little bit longer to help build up that tension and build up that excitement. But it can be a real um, trick to try to make that interesting throughout uh, to be in a two feel. Um, so we're going to talk about some like concepts to, to work on that today. And everything that we're using today um, also is directly coming from my, uh, my new course out on Open Studio Jazz, the Building Blocks of Bass. You can find a link for it down below. But this is one of the things that we get into in the course, and uh, I just wanted to expand upon that today in our guided practice session. So, without further delay, here is the first concept I want to talk about. 
Okay, so if you're on a phone, I, you can just describe this, you know, if you're on a small screen, whatever, it's not a big deal to be able to see this. But uh, what we have here is half notes, and I just put open string D, okay? So now when we're talking about half notes, and this goes the same for quarter notes too, uh, when you're thinking about this forward momentum and staying inside of the tempo really strongly, I like to think about triplets. So for instance here, I'll cut on my metronome. You see our little uh, metronome marking down here is half notes at 40, right? So this, this is now clicking, this is at 40. Hopefully it's at 40, it's an old metronome with an old battery, so it's probably pretty close though. So, but let's call this beats two and four, right? Nothing new if you've been on these guided practice sessions before. I like to use less metronome, two, three, four. And if you ever have trouble finding that, say two, four, two, four, one, two, three, four, right? So before we play anything, let's try to hear this triplet. Triplet, 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 triplet. Now in a two feel, a lot of times we're gonna be playing these half notes, but also to introduce some of the dancing aspect or the more active aspect of playing in a two feel, we have to have this triplet feeling going on underneath it, like as an undercurrent or like a frame holding up the, 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 the half notes. So I wanna practice that really specifically right now. So we talk about one, two, three, four, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Try this with me, okay? If you've got your bass or any, any other instrument, honestly, uh, you could do this with anything. But let's play the half notes and sing the triplets, okay? One, I'm sorry, one, two, one, two, three, go. However you'd like to say that triplet, have that externalize. Really hearing that. Another way that you can think about this triplet though, is to think of the longer triplets, so the quarter note triplets. So here's one, uh, triplet, triplet, really help when the tempo is faster. So right away if we turn this into, uh, let's just say beat one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's a lot faster, right? To say triplet, 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 it's gonna drive you nuts, right? But you can think of it, triplet, 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 and it's got more of this to me, this more like rounded kind of feel to it, right? Triple it, 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 triple it. You know what I mean? So for me, that helps me to find, to really pinpoint where that beat's gonna drop. And so by practicing that with a metronome, it helps my internal time when I get on the stage or if I go to play with a drummer. The drummer's you know, like we're not supposed to fall to their time. You know what I mean? We're supposed to provide our own time. We're responsible for having good time, right? Um, having a good time, having good time, all important, right? But practicing with a metronome like this is definitely gonna help you to solidify your time. And uh, bringing this back towards uh, it, providing less information can really help us. So let's go back. Now that this is off, let's, um, let's try, or the, the screen thing is off, <laughs> let's try this. So this is just the first eight measures of all of me. And if you have all the chord changes, that's sweet because I'm gonna take this off pretty soon. If you don't know the chord changes, please click the link down below, find the chord changes. These are not like, this is not biblical, like this is not like the only way to play the chord changes to all of me. Go listen to the recordings, we talked about this weeks ago. But these are the chord changes we're using to practice. That's a difference, right? So let's, let's go back, let's call this beats two and four for a minute. Again, my metronome's at 40. And let's just play this. Now this looks super simple, right? This is just the roots in half notes, right? But if we can make this feel good, everything else is gonna feel good. But it takes focus and it takes really like uh, a dedication to the beat 
and really staying right on top of where we're at rhythmically, okay? So let's try this. We're just gonna do the first eight bars for this example, and then we'll try to go through and do the whole chord change, or the whole changes to all of them, okay? So let's try this. We're gonna call this two and four. Two, three, four, one, two, triple it, triple it, root. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Try to stay right on top of the beat. I'm really trying to make all these long too. You notice I'm playing a lower octave than what's written. It doesn't really matter. You can switch octaves and it's good to practice that. Let's go back and let's do these eight bars again. So knowing this octave displacement can really be helpful too. If you can play it in tune. Triplet, triplet, triplet. And again, this triplet undercurrent is gonna help us when it comes time to do to put in those skips and those other, you know, like uh, the candy, right? The, the candy on top is about to reach for my skittles, but uh, I'll, I'll stay focused, I promise. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about this though, because the two feel is not always this middle of the road tempo, right? This is 40, and if we're at uh, calling this two and four, it's really 80 beats per minute, right? But if we call this beat one, Matt, what, 160, right? You can play a two feel faster, and this, this comes up quite a lot, honestly. Playing in a two feel, you can play a two feel on a ballad, play a two feel middle of the road, and you can play a two feel up tempo. So practice them all these different ways too. And listen, really, when you're listening to any recording, if you hear a two feel, what's going on? Like what's happening during it? But let's check out the changes, all of the changes to all of me, and I'll just show you because it's funny. How about this? This is all the chord changes to all of me. All right, you got it? Okay, great. So, but if you didn't get all that, click the link down below and you can get the PDF if you don't already know the chord changes. If you don't know the chord changes, learn them because this is the standard that's gonna come up a bunch, okay? It's just gonna be expected. So I'll stop talking. Let's play the whole all of me chord changes in just the roots, but let's call this beat one. So we're gonna play it at 160, okay? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Right, and that's a way to find that. Just find one, one, three, one, three if you ever have trouble finding that, like with the less, lesser metronome. One, three. And that's right where we're gonna play it too. Triple lit, triple lit, triple lit, triple lit. One, two, one, two, three, go. Three chord. Here comes A. D. Then we're gonna go to E7. Seven, to G7, back to C, to E7, triple it, triple it, triple it, A7. And you can use octave displacement, remember? So now we're going to the four chord. Four chord, three, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, something like that. Awesome. So let's talk about one of the next steps inside of that. Once you get your half note feeling good, and again, that should feel very, very solid, especially with the attacks, and just as much so with the decays, like how long, how long the note is, is ringing for. Super important, okay? Is these full notes, okay? So let's move now to the next idea, which is to play half notes root fifth, root fifth. Okay, that really gives a strong, like this five, sounds like it wants to go back to one. And it just gives a really strong grounded feeling, like the first most uh, crucial note to a chord is the root, as far as bass players are concerned. It's the root. The next most powerful note inside of that is the fifth, typically, right? You have a half diminished, it's a, up for grabs. But this is what's gonna, gonna help us to fill in the gaps as far as like playing extra dance notes, like quarter notes, approaches, triplets, anything else, we have to be able to do something like this over the chord changes, whatever the song is. And of course today, it's all of me. So let's just, let's get our feet wet. Let's play root, fifth, root, fifth. 
you could read this, you could just think it. I think thinking it is a good way to go, you know what I mean? Because we're going to play this tune. So let's try root fifth. And let's try it over the whole chord changes, okay? And I'll call it out so you could read it if you've got the PDF or you could just listen to what I'm saying. We're not going to do it too fast. We'll go back to this other tempo, okay, to where this is 2 and 4. So we're back to 80. So 1, sorry, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, go. Root fifth. This is like C, C chord. Here comes E7. Fifth, which is B. Now we're going to A. What's the fifth of A? And this is simplistic, right? But you have to make this feel okay. You could do stuff like this. You could be plucking in a weird spot or off tempo a little bit. But the idea is to keep them nice and long. Here's the D, D chord, D7. Here comes D minor seven. So what's the fifth? It's D, C, G. And this, these type of tempos, it's really good to experiment. See, I'm speaking and I can't play. It's good to experiment with your octave displacement or your ranges. Here comes D7. I'm sorry, that's D minor. Here comes the F chord. Here comes the four chord. Ready? So F. What's the fourth, fifth of F? Again, now it's F minor, but we're not really doing that right now. E minor 7, A7, D7, D minor 7, to G7, the fifth. So we're being just like really, we're practicing, right? But if you do that throughout all the chord changes and make that feel really good, the band's going to understand the bottom of the chords and be really together with it. So let's double that tempo and try the same idea, okay? So now we're going to call this, how about let's call this beat four right now. If you're doing it this way, just say four when it clicks. I'm going to let you try it. Can you hear it? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So let's do the same thing. We're doing all of me in C, root fifth, root fifth, just in half notes dead on though and try to hear that triplet so if this is four one two three four triple it 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 and hear that kind of flow don't think this uh 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 you know i i, th I guess you can think of however you think of it to make it feel good but I, that's how i think of it so four one two three four one two three one two one, two, three, go. Here comes A7. D minor 7. Try to stick to root 5th, even though I didn't. doing that by really solidifying these half notes just like when we talk about quarter notes the quarter notes have to be solid but yeah in, in two half notes have to be rock solid right so that gets us to like this four one two three four I feel like hearing that in a more open, like expanded way, instead of thinking all four beats, it's gonna help you dance over it and get back to like where one is by hitting the, hitting like say the root of the chord, right? Because 
I'm trying to think of what a 1 is, and I'm hearing that metronome as 4. OK. The next concept. This is nothing new if you've been hanging out with us, especially talking about walking lines, things like that, um, is to add in a little bit more motion. So if you look at what we have here, this is root fifth root, but now we're going to use some chromatic quarter notes to move towards the next chord. Earlier, what we were doing, right, is just hitting half notes, hitting root fifth, or just root root. But now these quarter notes really help to propel this line towards the next chord. It's something similar like what we would do uh, playing uh, a walking, walking lines, right? Or oh, eighth note lines even. But this really just helps our two feel kind of move forward. So let's play this through really quick, okay? And let's keep it at this tempo where it's faster, okay? You can always go back at any time, rewatch this, pause it, whatever. You can always go back and practice it slower, but let's, let's try this out. So what's the main, the main idea here? I'm hitting roots, fifth, root, then a whole step below where I'm heading on beat three, right? So this is D because it's a whole step below E where I'm heading. I'm trying to get to E. Let me try to say this clearly. <laughs> I'm thinking a whole step leading into E. So what's a whole step below E? D. So my next chord after E, after I've done my root fifth, really solid swinging, great feeling half notes and some quarter notes leading to A. So what's a whole step below A? because I want to head in this exercise from below chromatically up. So A, that gives us G. So G, G sharp, A. You don't even really need to think too hard about that if you can hear on your bass or see on your bass where those goal notes are. Literally just put, just put two chromatics in front of it, you know what I mean, or below it, however you want to call it. Get the idea? All right, so let's just try this. Um, let's try this now. And again, if you're just joining us too, all of this uh, we're drawing today specifically from my new course that just came out on OpenStudioJazz.com entitled The Building Blocks of Bass, and where we go over stuff like this. We talk about very fundamental things like you know, how, the, how the bass makes sound, how to get a great sound, how to play with good time, and that's where this comes from today. We're talking about rhythmic studies, how the triplet integrates with the half notes, and vice versa, how we use those together to make things feel really good. But, I just thought I'd add that, that all, everything we're doing today is coming from my new course. So definitely recommend, I of course recommend you check it out, it's my course, right? But, um, but I really put it together thinking of what I would want to hear as a bass player just getting started. What I personally would want to, I'm sure people told me and I didn't hear it, but when I was younger, what would I want to hear to become a better bass player like, you know, like immediately just by watching the video and then practicing it, you know? So anyways. Let's do that chromatic walk up, okay? Let's call this, just to make sure we've got it cool, I take it back, let's put this at 80. So that's the good thing about a slow metronome too, is you can be flexible with it, right? So let's call this two, three, four, one. So we're gonna do all of all of me, roots, fifths, root, and then quarter notes leading to the next chord. Now if we have two chords in a measure, you could just make that fit, but that doesn't really come up until we do the turnaround. I'll stop talking. Let's play it. One, two, one, two, three, four. That could happen there too. So we're heading to it at E7. So what's up? Good. This is E7. Now where are we heading? A. So a whole step below A. Triple it, triple it, triple it. Where are we going? E7. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Where are we heading again? A. Triple it, triple it, fifth, triple it, root. Again, we're staying on D, so just doing a half step leading it to. That was one chord per measure. That's in here. So we're at C7 again. Where are we heading? To E minor. 
A. Good. Now to G. And that was just being silly, right? At the end of that, you could totally do something like that if you wanted to be playful and keep to the rules of doing a whole step below where we're heading. Um, let's try it where the tempo is up now, okay? So with everything, make sure you got it slow. Make sure, man, I practice so much slow stuff these days. Not that I can play fast, but by playing slow, I'm like really, really internalizing and hearing stuff way more honestly. It just took me a long time to get to actually figuring out that practicing like that is good for me. All right, that being said, let's play it fast. So now we're gonna call this beat four. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, go. Root, fifth, root, where are we heading? E, now we're heading to A, to D. You don't even need to know the qualities right now. You just need to know the roots and the fifths. So don't worry about getting too fancy. set you up into the walking for when you get out of the two feel but the two feel has to feel good before you even think about going there okay all right so just to be thorough we're going to do the same thing from above so again the rhythmic aspect is, is what's important here right so we're keeping our half notes super solid half note half note half note quarter notes leading to where we're going right uh, so all of this is from above either scale wise or chromatic Depending, you know, like not everything makes a lot of sense to do just chromatic. Uh, like if I was to think F sharp, F natural to E, that would sound a little awkward. You know what I mean? But this B to B flat to A does work. Okay, so play this along with me. And again, if you need the chord changes, if you're just tuning in or whatever, check out the chord changes down below if you don't already know them and learn them. All of me is, you know, you, you got to know all of me. Okay. So, but now we're going to go through the tune. We'll do it in this half uh, at 80, and then we'll do it at 160. But, um, but, and by practicing slower, we're really thinking about what it is we're trying to accomplish, right? So, but we're going to go from above now, leading into our next chord. One, two, one, two, maybe like... should have played F sharp to F. That chromatic motion there would have worked. So here, let's do E to E flat. E flat, E flat, E flat. Sorry, I can't speak. D, now we're gonna stay on D. So E to E flat, D. And going to G. D, D flat, C. So I guess really the only place that it works to use scale-wise is here. seem like boring simplistic practice and it is but if you can really stay focused inside of this it's gonna help you okay to F Let's immediately, let's bump it into the fast tempo, okay? And it's not super fast, but again, know that two feels happen in faster tempos. It's not just middle of the road. And on ballads, it's especially tough. If you try to play a two feel on a ballad, you know, you have to really be able to hear this. 
but let's call this beat four now. Four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Sorry, I won't wag my finger at the camera. Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, go. Above. Just trying to be dutiful to what we're practicing. So that is some of the more tedious work to do in there, but if we add in some syncopation now, this can be a lot of fun. Uh, it could happen to you, the Miles Davis on Relaxin' with Paul Chambers where he stays into the whole time. That's a very special one. There's not a lot of tracks. If anybody else knows some other tracks where the bass player stays in two the whole time, please let me know. But I put in some other ones, and you can hear where the bass is usually playing into underneath the melody. And But this can also happen when soloists change. It's a lot like the drummer changing cymbals. Uh, if we go into a two feel, that can really change the dynamic of the, of the song, right? If we go to another soloist and we go into a two feel, that can potentially open things up. It could potentially uh, make more room for the soloist. It could be the wrong move, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like if, it's, if the soloist is really starting to go for it or jumping in just like, you know, running and we're playing in a, in a two feel that's not really dancing and maybe just as straight up half notes or whatever, it could be the wrong choice and that's okay, but stick with that. You know, if you go into a two feel at the top of a chorus, even if you're in the middle of the tune, stick with it until you get to the next chorus or something, okay? Don't try to change it in the middle. Okay, anyways, two cents. Here is a rhythm that's taken specifically from uh, like Paul Chambers playing over that It Could Happen To You track, okay? And so you hear this, this is the three, over over four, right? There's four beats right here. This is like three over it. One, two, and three, four. But if this is like two and four, one, two, three, four, da, 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 ba, da, 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 ba, da, 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 ba. So it's like hearing that three even more extended than what we were talking about earlier. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, da, 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 right? It's a different thing because the three is, it's not quite lining up the same way. But let's try this rhythm. Just play this exercise or this little snippet with me and then we'll do the whole tune, okay? One, two, one, two, three, go. So still root. And that eighth note just gives it a little extra dance. This is not something you want to play the whole time. None of these are. None of these are the answer for the whole tune. Don't play these. This is, this is some ideas to put into your two feels, okay? I should have had a disclaimer, right? That's, that's the idea where we're doing every other beat with that, that uh, that eighth note or that three over four type of thing. Let's try that with all the all the chords now, okay? So this is all of me. Well, let's do it at the faster tempo too, okay? Just for time sake, because I see we're getting a little further on. Any comments too, please leave them over there. Any any questions or advice, I'm all yours. All right, so one, sorry. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So our rhythm now is gonna be like this. One, two, three, four, one, da, 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 da. Da, 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 over all of me. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. And you can almost play any of those, any of those. 
those ideas that we worked on a minute ago. Sorry, I can't speak and play it. As far as if it's like chromatic from below or scale from above, that works. Just make sure it feels good. Here's the second half of the tune. like an extra or if you do part of your um, your phrasing where you're playing in four that still counts as being in two so I added in here and, and you can find some of this now I'm even more gone right you can see my head I'll take this moment to eat a skittle but if you look at look at the what I have on the screen there it's just some examples of more dancing okay just something I wrote out it's like and at a slower tempo because at a faster tempo this is going to give you it's going to hang you up a little bit so here goes a skittle all right so look at that and let's, let's call this two and four at the slower tempo and play this exercise. Remember, all of this comes back to the triplet. So if we're hearing this, two, three, four. One, two, triplet, triplet. Let's play it. So one, two, one, two, three, four. elements right I'm hitting a lot of roots and fifths and half notes there's that quarter note walk up thing which is just to propel the bass line the bass line right and so it just gives it a little bit more dancing a little bit more momentum but the two element is still there the primary aspect of it is half notes, right? And what's holding all of that together, again, is the triplets. You don't always need to like subdivide in your head, but it can really help you until you get used to it, okay? Triple it, 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 da, 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 Da. That's like the two feel for the ride symbol. Da ba, da 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 da. It's more open, right? It's not da 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 da. So that's important to know too. Like kind of like you want to know where the drummer's coming from with the two feel as well. What does a two feel ride pattern sound like? What usually happens with a hi hat? Questions you should you know investigate if you don't already know the answers to. Okay, because if the drummer's going da 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 da. And implying four, and if you're playing in two, you know, it could be cool. There's nothing, there's like, there's no rules. There's just things that tend to work better or be more historically or stylistically accurate. So I'm just saying know that, okay? So let's go through and just play together. So if you've got your bass, that's awesome. I'm gonna play through the whole chord changes uh, to all of me um, and try to just play, I'm gonna practice through, how about two times through at the faster tempo at 160 Think about dancing, but still keeping those core elements of the half notes, chromatic motion, scalar motion, uh, keeping the triplets involved, right? But trying to make it bounce and still feel grounded, okay? So I'm gonna call this four. One, 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 two, one, two, three. Triplets. have to be solid, non-negotiable, and every
everybody in the band is going to appreciate hearing those roots too. Ah. That was obviously a technical glitch. It's the streaming, not my playing. The busier you get with this too, the more distracting it can be. So make sure it feels good at this like uh, more simplistic level too. Uh, simplistic, yeah, lesser. And then when you add in that rhythmic bounce, it can be a little bit more special. If you're doing this. be saying too much. The goal is to make it feel good and get the other band makes to sound good, right? To feel good rhythmically, to know what the chords are, be supportive. If you're playing too much, like adding in too much of that extraness, it can detract from the bass line, right? So and again in this Spotify playlist there's some some good examples. So if you're looking for something to transcribe, everything in that playlist is good. Transcribe it, let me know. Let me see what you got. Or play it. And playing along with those recordings. Oh man. On top of it just being fun, you're gonna learn so much. to four, it just feels good. Well, hopefully. Right? That's the idea, at least. Okay, cool. So that's that's uh, kind of what I wanted to practice today uh, in regards to the two feel. Um, so I'm going to hop on over to the comments. Not as many folks commenting. Oh, yeah. S Stefan, or Steven, Stefan, save a few green skittles for me, pretty please. You got it, Stefan. I got some in here. Got your green skittles right here, man. Right there. Whoa! Oh, I just killed my light. <laughs> Andrew, you saw that, right? <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, I can't save you any. I can't promise that, Stefan. I'm sorry. Um, we have a limited amount of skittles in the house, but they're important. Um, so I'm gonna eat them. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up, Seth? Excellent material for pianists too. Greetings from Indonesia. Hey, greetings. Thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, I think rhythmically, everything can transfer over to any instrument. Um, and if you're playing any left-handed bass too, this is all stuff that really needs to be solidified, right? It's, 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 to me, it's important no matter the instrument. Sorry, I'm like trying to digest a, a green Skittle now. Thanks, Stefan. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah, and I got to say here, too, I like this comment a lot. Check out Bob's new course and get $30 off. So for today, until midnight, midnight wherever you are, um, I don't know what time it is in Indonesia. I'm sorry, uh, Seth, but um, <laughs> if you were at all even interested in this course. But check out my course. It's, um, it's titled, Cleverly Enough, The Building Blocks of Bass, just like these sessions. But it's, uh, the, whole, the whole point is to talk about aspects of the bass that don't get enough uh, attention like on YouTube or on other you know other I know I'm on YouTube right now no offense YouTube you don't care but uh, but more details right that's what open studio excels at is having these courses that really get into details and things that we can practice to really get better so my course here is called the building blocks of bass and everything that we took today is coming directly from that course so um, there is good stuff in there and for the rest of the day you can get $30 off the price of the course. Uh, just click the link down below and it should be good. So Steven, this is Steven. This lesson is excellent for a beginner. Thanks Bob. Really glad you think so. Thanks Steven. And this case in point, this is for my building blocks of bass course which is geared towards 
beginners or people that are beginning anew on the upright bass. You know, you can do this, like going back to this stuff is essential at any developmental stage, to, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? Uh, or if you're coming from another instrument, you have a different perspective. So, so I'm glad you liked it, Stephen. Thank you for saying so. It's very cool. Mark is watching, watching though. Watching through? Watching though. Indeed. Watching though. I'm kind of freaked out now, Mark. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm glad you're watching, man. Thanks for being here. Patrick, thanks for the awesome lesson, Bob. Thank you, Patrick. Really appreciate it, man. Thanks for watching. Ben Flowers. Wait a minute. I got autoplayed to the stream from a Rejoicer album. What? Hey, I don't know what to tell you, Ben. I don't even know what Rejoicer is. I'm going to have to go look that up. So I'm sure it's killing, whatever it is. Yeah, I need to look that up. I don't know it. But if you're still watching, thanks for the tip. Uh, okay, Carl. This is a longer one. Don't be embarrassed about any questions, man. <laughs> Everything is cool here. So Carl says, I'm embarrassed to ask, but how do you recommend approaching practice as a singer-guitarist who grew up on R&B, jazz, and, oh, I lost it, um, bossa, etc.? Do you think emphasizing the chord changes or feel is more important? Ooh, okay, so, so for, um, feel is paramount. I'm, sh I'm sure you would agree with that, Carl. We don't know each other, but feel is like has to be there. But what also really does have to be there is the chord changes, right? I mean, you're not playing the song accurately, accurately or doing the song justice if you're not playing the chord changes. So you have to make the changes, but it also has to feel really good. And there's a balance on both ends. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, musicians will like go to school to study music and they're learning all the chord changes. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I can take this through all the keys. I could play this lick and this key, you know, over this weird time signature without really digging in and like listening to the recordings and playing along, playing with a bunch of other musicians and getting that feel, right? So I think they're equally important, but with an emphasis on you better have a good feel. <laughs> so I don't know if that's like, um, you know, I think that's an official open studio stance. It's got to feel right. And it's also got to sound right, you know, um, but practice as a singer guitar player grew up in R&B and jazz and bossa you know that I wanted to mention too because all of that coalesces into the music that is jazz right I mean I play R&B songs I of course play jazz we play bossa um, I play different styles too but inside of the quote-unquote jazz idiom we play all those styles right and they all feed from each other um, and uh, so it's important to have a knowledge of those too so I think it's a great perspective to have as far as uh practicing you know uh, so um but i hope that answered your question carl if it didn't if you're still here just keep keep uh keep uh keep writing write me again or join the facebook group too so it's a we have a, a building blocks of, of jazz facebook group that has a lot of um um you know has all the members that are checking out stuff here and it's a good place to connect is what i'm trying to say so i'm having a hard time um speaking today uh, D. Thompson, thanks again. Hey, you're welcome, D. Thanks for being here. Okay, so, um, but Carl, if, if that didn't ad address your question appropriately, please let me know. I, I'm down to talk about this forever. I just want to make sure I'm, you know, speaking to what you're speaking of. So, Chris, hey, what's up, Chris? How are you, by the way? Good to see you, as always. Lots of tunes use a two feel under the head and then move to walking and four for the solos. Nice to have in your toolkit. Cool, toolkit. Absolutely. I made a slight, I made a reference to that for sure. So that a lot of times the two feels happen in the melodies and then immediately bounce into four for the solos. Um, and so I think an important thing to notice too, and Christian talks about this, Christian McBride, excuse me, I'm not that formal, Christian McBride in his course, the Your Sound is Your Signature, um, addresses this specifically that it's cool. And they're talking about a story from Benny Golson, actually. I mean, talk about like authentic, you know. Uh, Carl Allen is who I'm speaking of. They're talking about staying in two longer. If you're playing the tune in two in the first place, it should have that feel, but make it a real event. Stay in this two feel for a while. Don't automatically jump to four for the first soloist. You know, don't show your cards too quickly. You can keep that two feel going on and then, you know, it'll bounce. It'll help give that soloist a little extra, you know, energy when it does go to four. 
or if you go to four for the next soloist, it can bounce up the energy level of the tune. So it's not, uh, yes, it, over the melody, a lot of times the, it can have that two feel um, and then go to four, but it doesn't always need to do that either. Sometimes walking under the melody can really be the move too. It just depends. You know, it's a, it's a stylistic choice. Listening to recordings, listening to a lot of recordings can help you to influence that. All right, I'm gonna keep moving. Broadway Joe Morris, what's up Broadway Joe? Hope I can call you Broadway Joe. Uh, thanks, Bob. I'm recording a big band tune, 15 horns, 5 rhythm and singer, 16 bar rhythm changes. For the bass line, are there two feel to four feel protocol? Okay, um, so we kind of addressed that, and it would have to deal with the style, Broadway Joe, without knowing your um, uh, song specifically. But does the tune need that push? Do you know, like um, the two feel has a little bit more dance. Dun. Mm, mm, mm. Does, it depends on what the section is sounding like and if the two feel is really appropriate for that. But what I was saying just a second ago is that when it goes from the two feel to a four feel, it can help to give a boost to the song. You know, we're not just talking about the bass itself. It all works in conjunction, right? It's all together. Um, so, but for 16 bar... So for me, rhythm changes is usually 32 bars, but if you're talking about 16 bars, like maybe moving, uh, moving feel halfway through, or just ch doing it in 16 bar increments, then maybe that's um, a good thing to do at the top of a section, is to change from the, the two feel to the four feel. What's, what doesn't usually happen, and maybe this is what you're referring to, is a two feel morphing into a four feel in the middle of a section, that doesn't usually happen. So if we're talking about 16 bars, you would typically get through that four, that four, 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 but you would typically stay in two that whole time instead of doing like four, oh, I'm gonna start walking here and then I'm gonna go back to two, back to four. It doesn't usually do that. It usually does it sectionally. Hopefully that's what you're, what you're asking about. Maybe that helped. Ben Flowers, Energy Dreams Rejoicer, great album, peace and love. Right back at you, dude. I'm gonna check that out. I've heard of Rejoicer. Are they related to, they're not related to Knower. Is this like some Ben Wendell business? I'm gonna check it out though, Ben. I appreciate that. That's really cool. Fernando, thank you, Bob. Thank you. Chris, what communication do you, oh, I like this question. Thank you for asking this, Chris. What communication do you need with a drummer when moving two to four? Sometimes it's just like this. Right? Sometimes it's just the look. So it depends. I think it depends on your familiarity with the drummer. But a lot of times it can just be a, a nod, um, which can be, you know, if you're not comfortable with that drummer, that could mean a couple different things to the drummer. It's like, yeah, stay in two. No, 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 I meant go to four. But usually you can find that out pretty quick. One big thing that I can tell you, Chris, is like, um, and you hear this, I mean, you listen to Oscar Peterson Trio, you listen to Ray Brown. This is a big one. You get to the end of the tune. So I'll play like, I'll play the second half of the tune of all of me, okay? And check out what we do here to imply that I want to go to four without even saying anything to the drummer. You probably already know what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna call this four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That big break, that big pause, that, how do you say it in literary terms, the pregnant pause, um, the really long pause that's like, um, you know, at the end of the tune. So I hit the one chord and then chill. But that tempo is still going on, right? That gives space for the soloist, whatever, if you, especially if you're coming out of a melody, if you do that, that can really help to mm, push that up. Okay, cool. So that's, that's what I, uh, that's what comes to mind when you ask that, Chris. So any other thoughts, I would love to hear what you think about that, of course. Um, other communication, nah, just playing a lot, you know? Listening, if you hear immediately that drummer going into, into four or pushing that four feel, start walking. You know what I mean? If you go into four and the drummer doesn't go, stay in four. 
<laughs> you know, you'll figure it out as long as it feels good. It's not, you know, of course, it's not a deal breaker. Um, so, all right, Carl says, thank you. Welcome, Carl. Thank you. Lucas, I, I always have the problem to only play root and fifth in a two feel. When walking, I always have the problem to play in a line. I am a piano player. Love your advice here. Greetings from Germany. Oh, thank you so much, Lucas. Greetings. Glad you're here. So I uh, have the problem to only play root and fifth in a two feel. Yes, I think what can get you away from that and maybe to adjust your line a little bit is to think about your octave displacement. We think about that from a bass player's point of view because we have less information to work from, like the piano, right? You have a, a range that you can work from, but we have a, maybe a more limited range. Maybe not, but I think octave displacement can help you get away from that. Uh, another strategy, and I didn't, I was on the fence about addressing this here, is to imply another chord change leading into, uh, leading into um, uh, the chord that's coming up. So if you're, you, uh, and you would want to play a two feel like, because that's really ambiguous. A lot of times, one of the characteristics of a two feel is that root fifth. But what I'm saying is you don't always have to go, and especially not with this like muted thing. This is a different style or whatever. Maybe it's not, I don't know. That's just not what I hear in modern like two feel. But what I'm saying is you can do the fifth that's below, the fifth that's above, the root that's above, the fifth that's above that, and start to play around with your range. And maybe that will help you, Lucas, you know, to get a little bit more uh, range in your lines. I think that'll really help. When walking, I always had the problem to play in a line. So when you say in a line, do you mean like a scale? Like a line, like the line goes up and goes down. Yeah, so again, using those octave displacement ideas can really help you to, I think, vary up your line a little bit. So if you hear something going up this way, make sure you've got it down this way too, right? Cool. Uh, Patrick, it's also, also for electric bass too, back to my comment beforehand. Um, I'm sorry, I like to go back up awesome lesson. I, I'm sorry, Patrick, I don't remember what your comment beforehand was. Broadway Joe, that's very helpful. Good, I'm glad. Good luck with the recording. Another great idea. Thanks twice. Hey, all here. Hey, good. Thanks again, Bob. As always, a motivating Monday afternoon. Of course, it's great so far. Hey, thanks for checking it out, Chris. Thanks. So uh, I have to get going. I've got another thing I'm doing here. Always enjoy being here for the Building Blocks of Bass, and I'm very happy to everybody that joined me today. Thanks for all the, the great questions and the comments. If you have any more questions or comments, please join uh, our Facebook group. Uh, you can find the link down below, um, or you can email me as well. Please check out the Building Blocks of Bass course on openstudiojazz.com. Happy practicing. See you next Monday, okay? Peace.